So, I, I'm, in, my pres in my presentation, the bit of introduction, population dimension, I bring them in, then dependence of health, which has already talked about, living conditions, I, I amplify a little bit on living conditions to show how this method will work, then say, concentrate on my sexual approach to collaboration, <coughs> then uh, bring up the opportunities and constraints, and bring an element of to show how this is a planning matter and how we can capture the, 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 the funds when we are planning and budgeting. Because people budget, but they don't know that the budget should, for, should be drawn from the, the, the plan. I will do some conclusions and then I will thank you and expect you to clap thereafter. <laughs> um, I think. Okay. The public, why are you going very fast? By, we are talk, I was asked to talk about in the context of low and middle income countries. The poor health remains one of the binding constraints to social economic transformation. Because when you have poor health, then you cannot talk about anybody going to office. Even there are farmers, in fact, for some of us who are from rural areas, we see people when they are, say, have malaria, or they go to the hospital, they fail to get what they need, or through their pocket, they buy imported doors. Then she's, she's recovering, yet she's not recovering. She, she remains there, but really in a very bad situation. She cannot go to work, she's not dying either. So <laughs> it weakens. That's why I'm saying that poor health remains one of the binding constraints to social economic transformation. And the understanding of the health is also a matter. Most people think of the health in terms of uh, the Ministry of Health, but uh, it is universal, it covers everything in terms of what we are doing, uh, in terms of what we eat, in terms of uh, product health, in terms of uh, our lifestyle, and as I will continue to explain. So it is also in terms of how it is designed, when we talk about health, how is it designed? Because most mysteries are in silos. We think of when we are budgeting, we budget of our core responsibilities or mandate. And in the end, you find that you cannot uh, get, capture the synergies of other, from other departments and ministries. Then, uh, country which income, with a country which is, has income below $1,025. That is what we call low-income country. Anyone which has more than that, then it is uh, a, a, a middle-income status. But these countries are also characterized by weak institutions, uh, poor funding, underfunding, under understaffing. It is low, low, middle, low, low income countries, and they tend to be very uh, uh, weak, with weak institutions, poor coordination mechanism, and institutions are underfunded, they are understaffed, and in the end, the service delivery becomes a problem. And uh, the more, unfortunately, most of these countries, they are in, in sub Saharan Africa. <laughs> so, we have really a struggle to move. And uh, finally, the low income countries are source constraint, weak institutions, underfunding, understaffing, and poor mechanism of coordination. Then bringing the population dimension, I thought this, I bring it this early in order to show that it is also a determining factor. Because you know Uganda has the high fast, highest fertility rate. I know I'm talking in the context of low income countries, but I can't fail to give examples from my country. 
where the fatigue rate has already dropped to 547 and we are celebrating yet according to the other vision we wanted it to be for at, at four but experts are telling me even with the four children per woman we are still in trouble we should go going two but at the time of writing talking about four was also difficult i am happy now as the uh, the economy is biting and people are becoming more civilized, the other child, the education, and what have you. Now they are talking about at least two. Right? Four is acceptable. But talking about two is still a, a challenge. That, but I hope as we go on, we may, may get it. The size of the family, in practical terms, if one has six children and one has, another one has two children, then really, you need much more to feed the, the family with the six children than the one with the two children. Imagine if you are earning the same salary, or you are all the same, you are, you are all farmers, what happens? Then there is much constraint. But he, the, that constraint comes in in terms of not feeding these people. Either the, in terms of calories, but also in terms of nutrition. And it, it becomes a problem. Then productive capacity becomes low because these people, as I said, they will do, uh, they, 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 if they are underfed and uh, not properly uh, looked after, the productive capacity becomes less. And if it's less, uh, this cannot be the taxed because they are not in the taxation bracket. So in the end, we don't have even the money for uh, our health. Then human capital development. Because we don't see, when we are talking about health, people don't see it as human capital development. From planning perspective, we emphasize this capital. Human, human resource development is the capital. You are, you are investing into health, education, access to water, and, uh, and dignity in order to have a good quality of the people. And when these people have skills, then they can participate in the economy and the dynamics of the economy can work out. Then you can have better salaries for some of us who depend on salaries. Then you can have good purchasing power and purchase even what farmers are producing and uh, 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 the, our commercial people are uh, saving. Then they talk. Again, this brings poverty trap because if you are in the you are in, you have a big population, you have a big size of the family, you are likely to be in a poverty trap. Can you imagine the poor person then produces a poor, the poor daughter and then it, 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 it won't use. Okay. I was like I come from a poor family, but uh, my father don't know what happened. Uh, he only managed to get three. And so we, we, I could survive. But when I got out, I made it horrific. I managed another age <laughs> to compensate for my father's problems. <laughs> By the time I realized that I was in danger, I had already done it. <laughs> so now I'm trying to plan for it. I'm also the victim. Uh, then, the terminus of health. I'm happy the Sengoba talked about it. We are classifying according to uh, Center for uh, development health. We classify it in four areas. This material circumstances, which is living conditions, working environment, and food availability. Many you are quite aware of diseases because of where we live. Uh, some people say, whether I was planning, they say, uh, you see, uh, land is free, is a gift from nature. Air is free. But my friend, when you build a house without ventilation, <laughs> even, 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 even what you build becomes expensive. So it needs the living conditions matter, food availability, and food will talk about both food security and also nutrition security. Mm -hmm. Then behavioral diseases, you know what comes in, in terms of substance abuse, sexuality, sedentary lifestyle, and nutrition. Then psycho, psycho, psychosocial factors like a stressful event, environment, and social support. 
but also there's biological factors like genetics, because we can't do much. I can only amplify a little bit on living conditions to be in the time given to me for 20 minutes. Water and sanitation, you know water diseases, you hope you're sorry, I haven't moved here. <laughs> uh, uh, Waterborne diseases are uh, quite a number. I was going to understand that in living sanitation, hygiene, food security, and nutrition. I was going to understand that uh, even washing hands is a problem, and the women are the culprit. When you go to toilets, we are the one who don't wash our hands. Then I think you have the men are very majority here. <laughs> we could prevent diseases by only washing our hands. It is also a problem. And uh, uh, for nutrition, I don't need to amplify on this, really. If uh, we are eating, I will show you the next table, that uh, we are producing food for which we, where you see them with blue, that's where the shortage is up. Uh, that's where the shortage is up. Uh, we are producing less cereals and pulses, and this are good for calories. We are producing less milk and milk products. We are in shortage. We are producing fruits. In fact, I was made to understand the World Health Organization uh, recommends about 220 liters per year. But we, are just, we have just moved from 40 to 60. So in consumption. So there are some diseases which can cause of poor consumption. Then fruits, we are still in shortage. When it comes to fish and meat, we are still in shortage. So in total production in these countries. But when it comes to households, when I grew up, I don't know how I survived to do what I am. We used to have milk only when we were somebody who is sick. <laughs> I don't know. We, should, we thought milk was, I think, a medicine. I don't know. We grew up knowing that. <laughs> Recently, I was made to understand that in, in Mushe, which is a, the food basket district, and then they are starting children, simply because the milk is all goes to, to the market. So this is a mindset battle also. You sell everything and you, you deprive your children, uh, the, 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 the same. Then household income and resource mobilization, which uh, I was saying, household income and resource mobilization. We need, I understand Uganda, uh, the what, on health, uh, out of pocket expenditure. It is about 43%. And the, the government only contributes 23. The donors contributing about 30, about 30. I, I didn't like this because even in Rwanda, it's only 28 out of pocket percent. Mind you, World well, Health Organization recommends 20 percent out of pocket expenditure. But in Uganda, we are only 43. Rwanda, 28. Kenya, 26. Uh, Tanzania, 23. Is there anybody from Burundi? I was going to say even Burundi. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like to, to cause a crisis. But Burundi, <laughs> it's a strange one. You may think things are bad, but out of pocket. Uh, Botswana, 22. But you got 41. Is it because? These people go to private sector and they have lost confidence in the mainstream. Yeah? What is going? Because I don't think they have disposable income. So these are issues which we need to examine. And uh, the light rush, uh, that's the one I was. What is this? Oh, I was saying that one. It is already done. Good. 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 I wanted to bring this issue of cooperation, proposed the mind sectoral collaboration for health benefits. Now, I didn't put police here, I understand the summary from the police. This is the gentleman. Now, I see you in white. I can only recognize you when you are in white. <laughs> <laughs> and when I see you, I slow down. <laughs> now you're black. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, but I think transport, you fit there. All of these, agriculture, water and environment, trade and industry, 
works and transport, <coughs> land and housing, education, sports, energy and minerals, gender and labor, all contribute to health in their budget, in one way or another. If I were to explain the details of each of these, we can talk until the cow, the cow comes back, but here there are no cows. So it means we can talk until the end. But you could quite imagine how agriculture is contributing through production, through nutrition, how water and waterborne diseases, the environment, and what have you. It is just to trickle you to think. So, to go to the question of the real uh, matter which I was called to discuss, all that was, I think, butter brown. I wanted to. I want to talk about my sector approach collaboration. Yeah. We need to ensure that there is healthy mainstreaming. When I was when we are planning in the gender to mainstream gender in the, the plan, the, the second five year plan, we had 17 consultants. There is no consultant who can work on mainstreaming gender in health, mainstream gender in education mainstream gender in each of the sector. And I, I had to talk to the Makere people to say, please try to teach the people so that we can also become most effective. We need to mainstream health in all those sectors. And if we have mainstream it, do we have the capacity there? That becomes a problem. Do we have the people to plan at the national level, at sector level, at the district level, even in our homes, some people go to the supermarket and they buy what they didn't go for. And they, they forget what they went for. And then you end up persuading more than what you So plan between at home is a problem. So we need to mainstream uh, health issues and adopting it and implementing health in all policies. And Dr. Se Professor Segova talked about it in his open remarks here. Uh, in health in all policies meant to be mainstreamed. We need to have, when we are planning, to know what is happening in our other sectors. Leveraging, this is the fancy, community resources for health. Because when we had these community development officers, they used to help us to think about the hygiene, about all those small things about how to prepare food, but they, I think that one collapsed. Or if it's there, it is dormant. Of offering to be revived in the future. We need to uh, also to entertain very clear resource pooling. Resource pooling, this is can be in terms of private sector insurances, it can be national insurances, it can be community insurances. All these need to be exploited. And then strategic alliances and partnerships in terms of uh, private sector in terms of civil society, in terms of uh, development partners. All these can help us in bring up the budget to be, be not directly in the Ministry of Health, but in the different sectors. I always tell people that if you are to, if you are to, 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 to do the, if you are to, to go into uh, ensuring that your, what you need is captured. Don't come to me. Go to the districts or the village. Because if something is not identified at that level, by the time it is in my office for the a national development plan, it is not there. And this is the problem with the cross cutting issue like nutrition, like everything, like environment, what have you. Once they are not captured at the, the, the sector level, there is no way we can capture them. So when we are planning, we need to uh, ensure that we take into account what is uh, internationally available, sustainable development goals. We need to talk about co continental vision, 2063, the East African vision, 2063, I think it's 53, then our national vision, 2040, and at the same time, the manifesto of the ruling party, which happens to be now in RM, then 
national plans and strategic plans. Do you know that some of your departments, where you come from, ministries and departments, don't have strategic plans? When you don't have strategic plan, then it means that you are not working in line with the national priorities. When you are not working in national priorities, then you are missing the East African Vision 2053. You are missing the African Union Vision 2063. You are missing the sustainable development goals which are going to guide us in the next 63 years. The issue is that in order to have multi sector, and when we are planning, we take into account all this and capture the synergies. And in the, in, in the ministry of the budget, you can only uh, capture these synergies if it is captured in, in your system, in, 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 in your sector, in your uh, um, strategic development plan. Otherwise, if you don't appreciate what, for instance, there is a quarrel between the water and the agriculture, it has been done for a long time. Uh, water, agriculture doesn't appreciate that water is part of the analysis with them. And the, uh, 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 those in water don't appreciate it. water is important for agriculture. Analysis, it is with the water. <laughs> Whereas irrigation, there is no way you are going to use hybrid. I put seeds or even in them without moisture and in the water. So it is quite important that we need to bear in mind all this. And uh, that's why in Uganda in, we are following the national vision. We have, a, besides the, all those which I've talked about, we have a framework which helps us to have a 10-year development plan, a five-year development plan, sector master plan strategies and annual plans. And these annual plans must be delivered from the national plans while the sector plans uh, inform the five-year development plan. And the, these things are captured at grassroots level where we might, we, we, they are, where, they are, where they are implemented, uh, enforced, and the, and the and the and monitored. Finally, thank you. Since the general is already on me, <laughs> one maximizing multi sector collaborations for leveraging health benefits requires viable functioning institutions with appropriate strategic plans. If we are going to do leveraging appropriate synergies, we need functioning institutions which have strategic plans which are properly funded, which are properly uh, staffed, and which are open in mind. Cross-cutting issues are appropriately executed at local authorities where programs and projects are implemented, enforced, and monitored. Opportunities are available through proper planning and budgeting. And we have evolving patterns which are still helping us. But constraints are in poor planning because we have no capacity or we don't, we don't have data. I like it here we were talking about uh, best, uh, best uh, decisions. Financing and poor capacity to implement the synergies needed to harness opportunities in low and middle income countries. Thank you very much.